Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. In this episode, I'm going to be introducing you to Mr. Greg Hambali, who is a senior hybridizer from Indonesia. He has hybridized a lot of really interesting and as well as ornamental plants here in Indonesia. He's quite popular in Southeast Asia region. A lot of people actually know him and his work. So in this episode, I actually interviewed him in a casual manner so you get to understand how his mind works, some of his values and some of his experiences with hybridizing plants so mr. Greg how long how many years have you been hybridizing for uh, I started my breeding work since I was attached to the research Institute in Bogor okay mm -hmm. do you remember around what years uh, say uh, actually since my uh, high school years I've been uh, working on uh, say cross-pollinating plants I mean what is the first genus that you pollinated do you of remember course, the carica papaya that was when uh, say i caught say the uh, say the female uh, papaya mm -hmm. female papaya plant with the uh, bisexual ones okay. so then to let them produce fruit as a kind of experience or say a trial uh, it is uh, important because then uh, you know that in the end uh, well, variation is generated through uh, hybridization. So I think a lot of people know you worldwide as an aglonema hybridizer but there would be a mistake to think that that's the only thing that you hybridize because I see that you do so many genus whether it's ornamental or like food crops. So you, are you like interested in learning about all the different mm -hmm. reproduction? Of we live in the tropics and the tropics is uh, really uh, a place where the diversity of plants is highest mm -hmm. in the world. So uh, that's why uh, we should not miss the opportunity of learning the individual species through actually kind of studying their kind of uh, requirement and life cycle. And then, then we know uh, what is happening. Yeah. And you're also interested in creating new products that are more resilient and beautiful. Yes. I mean, because before. nature is actually uh, I mean, kind of exerting this kind of <laughs> selection pressure throughout the years and then we in this case just kind of observe this and then apply what happens in nature to our kind of day-to-day -day, uh, activities in improving the I mean, uh, performance of plants. I, I see that you also do a lot of color manipulations. In your, is color a thing that really interests you at all or not? Color is important because then uh, differences in color may suggest of course uh, differences of uh, ripeness. Okay, for fruits? Or yes, for fruits and for uh, flowers, I mean, meaning that it's time for them to really kind of uh, be more attractive for, uh, say, um, visitation. Yeah. And we also talked a little bit before about how you're very interested in the symbiotic relationship between mm -hmm. animals and plants, which yes. is also includes mm -hmm. humans mm -hmm. and plants, human activity. Mm -hmm. We've surely created a lot of opportunity sure. for some of the hybrids to happen, mm -hmm. and it's very exciting to see your work, which we will visit later on. We'll, we'll talk about some of your works. But uh, is there a genus that you have not managed to or haven't figured out how to hybridize it? Is there any challenges? Hmm. Or have you pretty much tried most things Yeah, I mean, uh, Hoya is an interesting group. Uh, you see, of course, huh. I mean, if we can study the details, then we can uh, use this knowledge or information to really uh, diversify it. Yeah. At the moment, there is some kind of uh, difficulty. But oh. then I think, uh, you see, the, the moment there are so many interesting things that we can only say do a little bit of uh, tempering, then we can uh, make good results. Yeah. Maybe with Hoya, we need to actually kind of study exactly what is happening uh, since the time of the uh, positioning of pollinia in the stigma. Mm. And you see, I mean, uh, and all the different, uh, say, uh, insects that are important in the pollination process. Interesting. Now, if I ask you on the spot, what is like the top five genus that you have hybridized? Like, of course, maybe Aglonema you would consider like one mm -hmm. of your... Yes. And mm -hmm. then what are some other ones that you think are your biggest uh, achievements? In the past, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, of course, then Calathea is one. Calatheas mm -hmm. and? Calatheas and then uh, oh, now, of course, uh, Cirtosperma, but also Salak. Oh, Salak. Salak, yeah. Okay. Salak, I mean, uh, is an... In, and think an important uh, fruit plant for uh, people in Java and Bali. At least uh, we contribute to this development of uh, good eating dwarf salak. Because uh, salak basically is a relatively uh, 
hard to deal with because uh, the plants also you see are relatively uh, from say the uh, the base to the top of the leaves i mean could be about say six meter long mm -hmm. then with the dwarf salads then we can at least uh, reduce the height uh, say the size mm -hmm. and make them more manageable make the salad the dwarf salads more manageable okay mm. And eventually also spineless because spines is also a kind of a, you see a liability to yep. the cultivation of this uh, crop. Yeah, interesting. Now I think uh, arguably you're probably the most popular, most famous hybridizer in Indonesia. It rolls off your tongue. Mm -hmm. But are I there... don't want to say that. But let me say most important thing: let the plants speak for themselves. Correct. Let the products. You see. So in my opinion. Um, is not really kind of but who is the better who is best but most important thing let's just show it through our works Correct. so then make people happy with the results and then uh, then by uh, you see uh, making more items in the horticulture for the public use then they be, be more concerned in actually conserving the germ blossom Correct. Mm. Now, my, my question is, do you know if there are many other types of hybridizers or conserva conservation efforts by other horticulturists in, in Indonesia? Because I'm not familiar. Is there happening? Is there a movement? Think? I think there may be uh, individuals who are, you see, also keen in uh, doing kind of conservation work. But mm. the problem is here, I think we lack uh, coordination. Mm. Uh, you see, many of these uh, kind of uh, important elements in society, mm. uh, they think uh, they cannot trust others. So in so doing, then uh, they don't, they just work as if they are uh, away from civilization. I mean, uh, only say, uh, kind of concentrating on what they are doing instead of actually coordinating and then see which are more relevant and which are not. So then we can get better results by, you see, kind of, uh, employing different uh, say kind of mental power to solve the same problem ah interesting you say it's maybe less coordination and a sense yes. of community mm. and urgency and, and prioritization mm. interesting yeah that, that's good to know i mean i'm new to this so i'm that's why i'm asking a lot of questions and i'm sure i will be asking you you know for the I, hopefully you will have me in the next few visits because I, i'm learning quite a lot here and i think you have a lot of wonderful things to share with this with the world with a lot of what you're growing here as well not just ornamentally but also with like uh, fruiting plants and other types of techniques in growing plants which i found we, we filmed a grafting mm -hmm. uh, part earlier and that's completely new to me so thank you for sharing that what is also to put you on the spot what is your top if I can give you only five, top five hybrids that you're most proud of? Uh, Pride of Sumatra, Pride of because Sumatra? it is one of the earliest hybrids, mm -hmm. which actually bears all the good qualities of a good agronema. What is this? What do you, what, how do you define a good quality agronema? Uh, not only say good looking, it should be also relatively, say, kind of uh, resistant to uh, diseases. Mm -hmm. And then uh, man easily manageable, I mean, easily uh, mean, uh, taken care of. Yeah. And then, uh, and also it is so attractive that it will make the person who first saw it, uh, say... Four more favorite hybrids. Some of the good looking Caloteas, I mean, okay. uh, say the ones that has this uh, rosy-like flowers. Okay. Mm. And, and then you have three more. And then of course the Dwarf Salax, I mean, with uh, more uh, good to eat fruit. Yeah. And then, uh, say, stronger plant too. Okay, you have two mm. more. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, you see, uh, I mean, what I think uh, important is uh, also this Sirtos uh, Seman, it has not been released yet with yeah. all these interesting features of uh, good quality uh, plant as is shown by uh, the, say, characteristics of the, say, foliage and also the elements uh, relating to the beauty of yeah. the plant. And just so the viewers know what we're talking about, there are a lot of Sertrosperma around me. They're beautiful. I cannot show them yet. They are not ready for the market, but we will be back here to show case some of their qualities. And once they're ready for the market, we're trying to prevent incorrect market saturation and improper poaching and other good stuff. So give us some time. I'll be back here once we're ready to talk about Sertrosperma. But Mr. Greg Kambali, you have one more favorite genus to share with us. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, Amophophallus, not only say because it is, uh, say especially the so-called Amophophallus titanum, because mm. it's not only huge, but also 
it has the good feature of uh, say kind of uh, utility for producing this uh, glucomannan because mm -hmm. my uh, late friend uh, in this case I mean uh, Mr. Musashino from Japan mm -hmm. told me it is the most say important homophophallus for the uh, glucomannan content. But the beauty of the uh, inflorescences, as you may know, that uh, titanum consists of uh, different uh, forms of, uh, say, uh, inflorescence and also okay. uh, different color, different yeah. coloration. So I think if we can make hybrids of titanum with uh, better looking inflorescences and also make it also important in horticulture as a group command and producer, that will be a neat collective achievement for the people who may be uh, say interested in working on this plant. All right, quick question though. Are we talking about a cognac jelly? Mm -hmm. uh, we are yeah. talking about that species. Yes. I think that's mm -hmm. endemic to the East Asia region. But is it yeah. part nah, of the so called, uh, call it uh, here locally called porang? Mm -hmm. It is an important plant in the industry and uh, for sure uh, you see, I mean, uh, with more kind of uh, materials available, then we can then uh, put more, more use of this particular uh, sub, I mean, kind of substance. All right. And have you hybridized it successfully? Uh, um, no, because you see, I mean, uh, I mean, Amorphobulus is uh, seasonal. Okay. That's a problem. I mean, yeah. uh, so you need to grow more plants for us to make really kind of a synchronization of the flowering time. All right. Interesting. So hang on, then we might have missed one because I just now asked what is your favorite hybrid that you have done. So I guess we should do one more. Personally, like your, your personal favorite work. <laughs> mm, it's not easy because uh, in my opinion, life is a kind of ongoing process. Mm. And then uh, anything interesting, uh, in my opinion, is also uh, an important uh, feature, to, I mean, an important element to be included in the program. Okay. So, uh, 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 for me, any plants may have their own actually uh, kind of a special attraction. Yeah, and they all have their own value that we True. personally we cannot assign value That's to them right. yeah. as mm. an ind we, we don't have the rights to do mm. it True. basically. Yeah. But I would just want to point out also that these are also Mr. Greg's Hambali's work, the thermophilums. There's few variegated versions. I'm going to show that on the screen. We're very proud of it. And yeah, we will be visiting Mr. Greg Humbley more in this garden. Uh, unfortunately, we lost a few hours today because there, were a lot, there was an event that happened that's really, really amazing. So for those of you who are interested in agronomy, must do follow those events here locally in Indonesia. But Mr. Greg is known way more than his agronomy. But we should also understand that uh, we cannot work uh, by ourselves, I mean, work alone. Yeah. I, need, I have also kind of a support from my uh, uh, Singaporean friend who is really very much uh, say engaged in uh, plant uh, hunting yes. and uh, I mean this uh, certain Mr. Tadjuho from uh, Singapore Gardening Society Sounds in Singapore. Uh, we need such important figure in uh, supporting of not only uh, one country but also different countries because uh, Mr. John Tadjuho uh, is kind of coordinating all the field work in all these closely related uh, countries. Actually, I'm actually going to Singapore in two weeks. I would appreciate it if you can give me the contact. Maybe I will see if I can sure, visit his uh, mm. nursery and mm. hear his story about sure. you know sure. plants and. Mm. and hybridizing and collecting and all that stuff yeah but i think for now let's end this episode about hybridizing i'll be back to talk about other specific subjects thank you so much mr greg for having us today it's a very very busy day and again you have a beautiful mind thank you so much for sharing yeah, you're welcome i'll see you in the next one Bye -bye. Yeah. All right, so I kept this conversation light and easy because the next two episodes is going to be very, very tense and dense as I walk through Mr. Hambali's collection in his natural forest to look at his collection and how he hybridizes things and also graft things. There are a lot of interesting techniques, a lot of uh, food that are meant for food production as well as ornamental plants in the next episode. So stick around.